In the early 1960s, few pilots were as storied and accomplished as John Glenn. The Marine Corps aviator flew dozens of combat missions over the South Pacific during World War II, and dozens more during the Korean War. Later, he served as a test pilot, and in 1957, he completed the first transcontinental supersonic flight, California to New York in just under three and a half hours. a.m. Marine Airman Major John Glenn begins an attempt at a supersonic transcontinental flight. His Crusader jet camera plane leaves Los Alamitos, California, headed non-stop for New York with a sister plane. A year later, newly created, NASA began a recruitment program for its first astronauts. The requirements were specific, and the training was rigorous. Out of 508 candidates, only seven were selected. They'd become known as the Mercury Seven, and among them was John Glenn. Lieutenant Colonel John H. Glenn, United States Marine Corps, age 38, from New Concord, Ohio. After watching fellow Mercury Seven team members, Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom achieve spaceflight, it was finally Glenn's turn to put his three years of training to work. A 40-year-old Marine officer, Colonel Glenn fought in World War II and in Korea. His mission now was to orbit the Earth three times in about five hours. Training involved going through the motions time after time. With the Soviets leading the space race, having already sent a man into orbit in April of 1961, the Americans were hoping to keep pace and launch Glenn's mission in the fall of that year. But NASA simply wasn't ready in time. Bad weather and hardware malfunctions delayed the mission into early 1962. Launch dates would be scheduled, then postponed, a pattern that was repeated as many as 10 times. But finally, on February 20th, 1962, NASA gave the all clear and astronaut John Glenn climbed aboard Mercury capsule, Friendship 7, for his ride into the skies. All recorders to fast, T minus 18 seconds and counting engine start. Good Lord, ride all the way. Godspeed, John Glenn. Roger, keep is go and I am go. Our capsule is in good shape. After a clean launch, Glenn went into his first orbit, circling the globe at more than 17,000 miles an hour. This is very comfortable at zero G. I have uh, nothing but very fine feeling. It just feels uh, very normal and very good. Uh, Roger, Friendship 7. But the mission wouldn't be entirely drama-free. Right before making his second orbit, Friendship 7 began making erratic movements. Glenn realized the automatic control system was malfunctioning, forcing him to manually reposition the spacecraft. Then, while preparing for re-entry, Mission Control noticed that Friendship 7's heat shield and landing bag were not secure. We're not sure whether or not your landing bag has deployed. Uh, we feel it's far safer to re-enter uh, with the retro package on. Uh, we see no difficulty at this time in that in order to secure the heat shield, Glenn was ordered not to release his retro rocket, an engine designed to slow down the capsule. And after a few tense minutes, Friendship 7 splashed down on the Atlantic Ocean. Hello, Mercury Recovery. This is Friendship 7. Do you receive? First glimpse of the conquering hero, Colonel John H. Glenn. He left his footprints among the stars. He has a grin as wide as the path he blazed as he rests briefly before being flown to the carrier Randolph by helicopter. In four hours and 56 minutes, John Glenn successfully orbited the Earth three times, becoming the first U.S. astronaut to do so. He returned as a national hero, 
honored with a ticker tape parade in New York City, awarded the Space Congressional Medal of Honor by President John F. Kennedy, and later addressing Congress. This has been a great experience for all of us on the program and, and for all Americans, I guess, too. And I'm certainly glad to see that pride in our country and its accomplishments are not a thing of the past. <laughs> Not a thing of the past indeed. John Glenn's orbital flight was the beginning of a pioneering crusade, a leading legacy of the Mercury 7, from which all other NASA milestones would be forever indebted. <laughs>